In this video, we will explore the history of the Birmingham criminal group. Their origins formed the basis for the TV series Peaky Blinders. The true story was no less violent and chilling. Thomas Gilbert, a.k.a. Thomas Macklow, a.k.a. Kevin Mooney. This is a man who is considered one of the founders and leader of the Sharp Visors. It was Thomas's crimes that led to the phrase Peaky Blinders being first printed in the Birmingham Mail newspaper. Thomas often changed names. He was born in Birmingham in 1865, and his main job was as a cab driver. He was married to Elizabeth Macklow. Elizabeth was recorded as a typical housewife of the time. She listed household chores as her occupation during the census. One of Thomas's first crimes was a brutal beating on Adderley Street in Bordesley, where he also lived in 1890. It was Saturday evening, and Thomas and his gang met George Eastwood. Thomas bullied him and then beat him up for choosing a drink ginger beer. This crime was headlined as causing serious harm. George suffered a fractured skull and Thomas was given nine months in prison for this crime. Later, in 1896, he was sentenced to a month in prison for stealing 30 pounds of brass metal. When Thomas is released, he and Elizabeth move into a house on Adderley Street. In June 1902, he pleaded guilty to maliciously wounding another person. He was sentenced to six months of hard labor. The census of 1921 happened. Thomas was 57 years old and Elizabeth was 56 years old. Long gone are the days of thrills on the streets of Birmingham, and age took its toll. There were no forces and desires to take part in the devastating World War I. It's been 31 years since the beating of George Eastwood. Thomas worked as a cab driver for a firm in Nichelles. It is claimed that Thomas died at the age of 71 in 1936. It seems that he is an ordinary criminal of that time. But the crimes of band themselves were harsh and cruel. Folk etymology says that members of the Peaky Blinders gang sewed disposable razor blades into the visors of their flat caps to be used as a weapon during skirmishes in the future. However, Gillette did not introduce the first replaceable safety razor system until 1903, and the first factory for their production in the UK opened only in 1908. The British writer John Douglas from Birmingham mentioned such hats. Such hats were used as weapons in his novel, A Walk Down a Summer Lane. Participants with razor blades sewn into caps beat the enemies with their heads to potentially blind them or to cut the enemy's foreheads with caps, causing blood to pour into the eyes of the enemies. Birmingham-based historian Carl Chin believes that the name is actually a reference to the elegance of the gang's clothing. He claims that at that time the word peaky was popular, referring to any flat cap with a visor. Carl was a familiar Birmingham slang term. Such a word describes someone with a dapper appearance. The nickname may also be related to the criminal behavior of the gang. It is known that they crept up from behind and then pulled the visor of the hat over the victims' faces, so that the victims could not describe who robbed them. Economic difficulties in Birmingham have led to the emergence of a violent youth subculture. Poor youth are often involved in robberies and pickpocketing. They mostly robbed men walking through the streets of the slums. Gangs attacked, beat, stabbed, and strangled. The origins of this subculture can be traced back to the 1850s. Back then, the streets of Birmingham were filled with gambling establishments and rough sports, and the police began to stop this activity due to pressure from the upper classes. Naturally, the youth resisted, uniting in the so-called gangs of hard-working people. In the 1890s, youth street gangs consisted of boys and men between the ages of 12 and 30. In the late 1890s, the organization of these people formed into a hierarchy of soft power. The most violent of these youth street gangs have organized into a single group known as the Peaky Blinders. In 1890, several gangsters attacked a man. They sent a letter to various national newspapers. They then claimed to be members of this particular group. Their first activity mainly revolved around the occupation of favorable lands. Their expansion was marked by their first rival from the gang. 
They were called cheap side sloggers who fought against peaky blinders in an attempt to control the land. At the end of the 19th century, the peaky blinders established a controlled territory. Their criminal business began to expand. They engaged in racketeering, fraud, land grabbing, smuggling, truck theft, robbery, and bookmaking. They were more focused on street fighting, robberies, and racketeering rather than organized crime. The group was known for its violence, not only against rival gangs. The gang also used violence against innocent civilians and police officers. Gang wars between rival gangs often broke out in Birmingham, leading to fights and shootouts. The Peaky Blinders also deliberately attacked police officers. Constable George Snipe was killed by a gang in 1897, and Constable Charles Philip Gunther in 1901. Hundreds more law enforcement officers were injured and some left the service because of the violence. Soon the term Peaky Blinders became a household name for young street criminals in Birmingham. In 1899, the chief of the Irish police was contracted to enforce local law in Birmingham. However, corruption and bribery in the police for some time reduced the effectiveness of its enforcement. Every story has a way of ending. The story of the Peaky Blinders was also rapidly coming to an end. By this point, the Peaky Blinders had split into several families. After almost a decade of political control, their growing influence has attracted the attention of a larger gang. Their name was Birmingham Boys. The expansion of Peaky Blinders to racetracks provoked a sharp reaction from the Birmingham Boys gang. The Birmingham Boys were a street gang whose power extended from the north of England to the underworld of London. Approximately in the period from the 1910s to the 1930s, William Billy Kimber was born in 1882 at Summer Lane, Aston in Birmingham. He was a caster by profession and was the head of the Birmingham Boys. Along with gangs in Atoxeter and Leeds, he controlled race courses in the Midlands and the North. For several years, Kimber was probably the largest authority on organized crime in the UK. Kimber has formed alliances with smaller organizations. In October 1940, Kimber was president of the Devon and Cornwall Bookmakers Association. All this forced the families of the Peaky Blinders to physically distance themselves from the center of Birmingham to the countryside. After the departure of the blind from the underworld, the Sabini gang joined the Birmingham Boys Gang and consolidated political control over central England in the 1930s. This led to the final demise of the Peaky Blinders in the 1930s. Many of them left urban Birmingham for the relative obscurity of the countryside. Education, discipline, increased policing, and sentencing have contributed to a decrease in gang influence and increased control by authorities and police. The gang slowly began to disappear, and gang leaders move into government structures. But that's a completely different story. That's all for today. I thank you for your attention and recommend subscribing to the channel and also clicking on the bell so as not to miss new videos that come out daily.